Thanks for joining us at I Can Make Shoes. Today I'm going to show you how to make a pattern for a classic Oxford shoe. Okay, so to do the Oxford pattern, we're going to need some paper, a craft knife, a pencil, scissors, an eraser, and a pre-taped up last. Okay, so if you're unsure of how to tape up a last, we do have a video showing how to do that. It's really important that you leave the um, bottom of the last without any tape on it. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to draw the Oxford um, design onto the last here. Um, as you can see, you can use this method to do both men's Oxfords and women's Oxfords. You obviously just change the last that you're using. So I'm going to start by drawing the design onto here, um, and then we'll take it from there. Alright, so I have done a very basic drawing of an Oxford style shoe onto this last, including a back heel cap there. And I've also drawn in a slight detail of a tongue here as well. So what we want to do now is we want to just make a few marks on here to help us at a later stage. I'm going to start by on the inside here just putting a little notch in all three of these pieces just to indicate that that is in fact the inside of the shoe and that this is of course the outside of the shoe. Um, so what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and cut that out. You can also at this stage if you want to plot in your eyelet holes there for your laces um, you know, I can very basically mark those in now, but it is a good idea to use a ruler to make sure that they're perfectly um, symmetrical and even distance apart. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and cut that out now. Alright, so once you've cut around all of these lines, you can then remove any excess tape from the top to reveal the shape of your shoe. And what we're going to do next is lightly peel off each piece one at a time and place it down onto the paper. So I'm going to start with the front section here. place this down, it's important to stick the top line down nice and straight and then try and flatten it out as best you can. You will find in some areas you'll get some small creases and in other areas it won't want to go down because of the curve. So in those areas we'll just take the scissors and put a few snips. And that will help encourage the tape to lay down flat. Now we can see my mark here which indicates that that's the inside of the shoe. And that will help us remember how to piece these pieces back together. Okay, so I'm going to start peeling off bit by bit all of the remaining pieces and stick them down on the paper as well. It's important that you try and give yourself some space around each piece so that we've got enough space to add in certain allowances.
again, making sure that you stick your top lines down straight first. And any curves can be spread throughout the piece. Okay, I'm just going to put that to the side now while I work on the remaining pieces. Again, I can see my little notch there that I put in to indicate the inside. Now with the tongue, I'm just going to peel this strip off here and I'm going to lay that flat up in this area. What that's giving us is the length of the tongue for the time being. So we'll come back to that in a moment. And finally, I'm going to take off the back section. Now this back section will require a slit up the back. This will end up being a seam and will help us to get the um, curve at the heel of the shoe there. And it also helps us to lay this piece flat on paper. Remembering our little notch there as well. Okay, so let's come back to the tongue for the time being. What we want to do here is just extend the width of the tongue and bring it down on both sides. Now you can really make this as wide or as thin as you like, but we need to maintain that length at the top there. Now, I'm just also going to add about a five mil excess to the bottom there. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start to add the allowances onto each additional piece. Okay, so on each piece I'm going to add in um, a few allowances. Now this line here is where our laces would go. So I'll just draw in a few little marks there just to help us remember where we are. Now we're going to add a folded top line to the top edge of the shoe and down that um, edge that has the laces on them. So I'm just going to draw in approximately a 5mm folding allowance there and I'm just going to bring that up and continue it around the top line of the shoe. Okay, so that is our folding allowance. So I'm just going to put FA in that area so that we know that that area is to be folded. Now, along these two edges here, we're going to place other pieces on top of them, which means we need to put a small allowance as an underlay or a seam allowance. So I'm going to do about a 5mm around there as well, just to keep it nice and simple. So following that along the line of the pattern. Sometimes you might want to do your underlay allowance a little bit wider, but that's completely up to you as long as you keep your lines really even and neat. Okay, so I'm going to put a UL for underlay 
in that area. Now there's only one more allowance to be added to this pattern and that is on the feather edge here um, which is the lasting allowance. So I'm going to do approximately 25 mil and it's really important that on the pieces that have this little notch we include that into the pattern because we will actually cut that out of all the pieces so that we can see which piece goes with which. Okay, I'm now going to repeat that onto the other side of the pattern. Okay, once you have completed that on both of your sides, we're going to start working on the front section here. Now, this line here is going to overlap um, this area at the side here. So, we usually like to leave that as a raw edge. Um, you can, if you want to, fold that edge. And if you did want to fold that edge, you would just draw on a 5mm folding allowance there. Or if you wanted to do something like a pinked edge, you could also add in an allowance for that as well. Um, I like to keep it raw just because it uh, reduces bulk on the overall shoe. So for the sake of a super easy pattern, we're going to leave that area raw. So all this front piece needs now is a lasting allowance around that whole edge there, which is the feather edge. So I'm going to bring that out about 25 mil again and bring that all the way around following the line of the pattern. Don't forget to get that notch in as well. Alright, last but not least we're going to work on our back section here. Now, we do need to add a folding allowance to the top um, of that section there so that it flows nicely with the back of the shoe in that area. So we'll add about 5mm here and that will be labelled FA for folding allowance. Okay, now on the sides you have two choices again, whether you'd like to keep that as a raw edge, which is what we did with the front piece, or if you'd like to potentially add a small allowance to do a pinked edge, which we've got here. Um, or if you'd like to have a folded edge, you can also add 5mm to that area. But since we've done a raw edge at the front, we will leave that raw as well. So the only other allowance that this back piece needs is our lasting allowance at the bottom here. Now this one's a little bit trickier because we've got this slit up the back. So I'll just show you how we manage that. Bringing our lasting allowance all the way across and once you get to that V shape, you just want to completely ignore it like that. So we will actually cut that V all the way up and stitch that closed. Now some people ask why we don't put an allowance there if we're going to stitch it closed. And the reason for that is because we want to make the pattern ever so slightly too tight so that when we stretch it over the last um, we get a really nice tight fit. So that can now get labelled with lasting allowance. Okay, and these pieces are ready to cut out. Okay, so once you've cut out all of your pieces, it can all look a little bit confusing. So um, the way that you sort of piece it together from there is that these two pieces go in the front. Since it's an Oxford, the front will overlap the back. Your tongue obviously sits underneath there as well. And your back piece gets stitched on top there like that and obviously on the other side as well. 
So that's sort of how it starts to come together. I've obviously done all of these measurements very quickly and just by eye. So when you're doing this yourself, um, you might want to use a ruler to make sure that all of the lines are the same and all of the allowances that you've put in are the same and that they all match up. Um, and other than that, that is a completed pattern. Now, just to make things a little bit more complicated, I'm just going to place the front sections to the side and um, show you what we can do to make your lining a little bit easier. So we know that these two go together because our notches are there on the same side. So if I flip this around and use a small piece of masking tape, I can actually combine those three pieces together. And this will help me to make the back into one piece rather than three separate pieces. Um, this will just help make the whole shoe a little bit easier to put together. Now it's really important when you're doing this that you make sure that this top line is all even. And you might find that in some areas there's a small discre uh, discrepancy where your lasting allowance doesn't match up. This probably won't happen if you use a ruler and do it all quite precisely. But if it does happen, it's more important to have that error in your lasting allowance rather than on your top line. And much easier to correct as well. So as you can see, I've just used a few small bits of tape to turn that piece into one piece rather than three. And when you put that together with your upper, and I'll just attach the tongue in there as well. You'll see that it sort of goes together, Oops. something like that. And that will sit underneath. Okay. Thanks for watching. For more videos, subscribe to our I Can Make Shoes YouTube channel.